welcome to another amazing session, um, real life session with Abby. And today we're also um, having this amazing session with our amazing sister, Sister Bumi. <laughs> you know, it's, it's always like, yes, it's always amazing. Like when we have that one-on-one -on -one, um, get together to like, you know, do things like this, it's amazing. And um, so guys, today, I want to say thank you to Sister Bumi because, I mean, I've been through so many journey in life where I've met a lot of amazing people, but she is very special because God has been using her to really transform my life, make me see that, yes, God still loves me and he still um, cares about me in his kingdom. And I just want to say thank you so much. So today's session, um, we're going to be talking about insight and pregnancy. Insight and pregnancy. I mean, that topic as a whole, I, if I tell you how the Holy Spirit <laughs> drops that to us, you'll be like, what? Um, so I, I'm not that, like that super spiritual person. But then... I was like, I told Sister Bumi, right? I told you, I was like, sis, I mean, I don't know. We, I, we need to come up with a topic, you know? We can't just come to the screen and not know what to say. Right. <laughs> and then I was like, let's <laughs> pray about it. And so I was sleeping and that morning, I prayed about it in the morning and she just came to my dream and she was like, insight and pregnancy. And she explained it to me. And I was like, oh. And I woke up, I was like, seriously? I mean, God answers prayer. I mean, in, in unbelievable moments, in times when you don't even expect it. And that was how that message was revealed. And so that's what we're talking about today. And we're praying that the Holy Spirit will guide us, that our, our speech, our conversation will be centered mm -hmm. on God. So sis, let me allow you to also take over mm -hmm. the stage. Do you have anything to say before we get this going? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, sis. And man, when you told me that, that, that revelation that you had about me, your dream, ah, I yes. was like, God, me? <laughs> me? <laughs> but we thank God. We thank God. Mm -hmm. That's one thing I have learned, and I'm a testimony to that. There is nobody God cannot use. True. God will always use a willing vessel. I mean, if you allow yourself to be used by God, he will use you. You don't have yeah. to be a pastor, an evangelist, a bishop, mm. apostle, anything. Mm. I am none of those. <laughs> mm. I am none of those, but I just allow myself to be used by God, to be used by the Holy Spirit. And that is supposed to encourage someone today that yeah, yeah. there's something called spiritual pregnancy. When you are, when you are pregnant with the things, I mean, God has filled every one of us up with, with a purpose. He has given us something in our lives that he wants us to birth out. So a lot of us run away from it. We've been pregnant for donkey years because we're not ready to <laughs> deliver that child. Deliver that child that God has placed in you. Mary was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she, immediately, she was a little girl that the angel came to and declared these things, these powerful words to her that she's going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Imagine a 13-year-old or 14-year-old, like a small girl, being wow. told something like that. But oh. what did she do? She took charge of the situation. She oh, grabbed this God. immediately. She took charge of the situation and she, she, she was ready. She, she wasn't even scared. Imagine they expect men to bring home virgins because they test their virginity. Mm. They test wow. their virginity. And imagine her knowing that I'm betrothed to a man. I'm betrothed to a man and yeah. I'm going to be pregnant before even get to the man's house. Isn't that enough to even get her the second time? For oh, real, no, yes. She, 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 she was ready. She was she accepted it to prove that that purpose true. He will not just yes. leave you, send you on an errand, send you on an errand, and then just give you, leave you to just wander by yourself. No, if he has sent you on an errand, he's going to go along with you. And that's one thing I have learned in my life also. I am a living testimony of that. Oh. I am no pastor, bishop, apostle, nothing. I don't have any calling of God, but I allow myself to be used by God. I asked him. I just said a song. I love, I, I I love to sing a lot. And I've been I've been singing that song since when I was a child. Hmm. If you permit me, sing that song. It's, yes, um, go ahead, sis. <laughs> well, um, there I am. Hmm. Send me, send me. There I am. Yeah. 
talk and then talk ask God to give you that direction. And you know, after my Bible school, I've been asking God. I was like, okay, God, I did this Bible school now. I don't know what, what next. What next? next? What do you want me to use it for? Uh -huh. Exactly. And I've been praying to God, praying to God for for it. So even though that in 2020, He actually gave me um He gave me uh, uh, uh He gave me an assignment uh -huh. that I I didn't take I didn't take charge of that situation because of fear. Because of fear, exactly. Because I was like, "Are you sure I can do this?" You know what I'm saying? I, I, I exactly. Yeah. So that was okay. yeah. I, I, because of fear. I didn't, it took me three years. I mean, and I that that uh, that disobedience really delay. It caused a lot of delay in my life because I didn't wow. allow God to use me as much as He wanted to use me. Hmm. And it took me three. I know also other factors came in alongside because I was also feeling that. I didn't want, even when I I tried to do a little bit that I, he wanted me to do, but when I, the devil started distracting me by mm. using my children to maybe, it, I'm like, I don't want to be, mm. I don't want to be, so, you know, sometimes like when you get so embedded in ministry, it can allow you, you can, you can make you um abandon some personal things that you're supposed to have. Yeah. That's why ministers of God have to be very, very careful. They have to be very, very careful. And I, I was already aware of that. I was, like, I was like, no, I don't want that for my children. And when God saw that, I was even trying at a point, but it was beginning to affect that side of my life. He told me to slow down. He told me to be still and know that he's God. But then I was still, I still had this hunger in me. I was still pregnant with this baby, with this Holy Spirit baby. And I was still, I still had that desire that God, I still want to do your work. I still want to do ministry. I can also say because I have kids, I will now like not do and your own assignment like yes. I, I, I need to and mm -hmm. i was praying for the past two years i've been praying to god for balance for how to do both like how and that was how in this 2023 god just decided to just That's download cool. ideas into <laughs> me and immediately because of the clara experience i've had with disobedience i sprang into action that's what really is my testimony so when when each and every one of us especially when you are giving a life to you have something in you that yes. the Holy Spirit has the Holy Spirit already deposited a baby in you. He has deposited a baby in you that he needs you to birth. So mm. please, everyone, I want to encourage you today. Give birth to this child. Give yes. birth to this child. Get the world. Yes. Because the world yes. needs it. When yes. Mary gave birth to Jesus, uh -huh. Jesus became the savior of the world. Mm. He became the savior. I mean, she he, mm. she gave birth to the savior, the most important human being in this world yeah. that we live. Uh -huh. So there's something in you that needs to be birthed that the world needs. The world needs. If not for Jesus, we will not have salvation today. If not for him, we will not have salvation. We will not be able to stand with the Father. So yes. that, that's what I want us to think. If you think about it in this dimension, God will really give us that wisdom that we need. Over to Amen. you, my sister. Amen. I mean, you know, at some point, I didn't even want you to stop again. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> I didn't want you to stop again because you are really like saying most of those important things that a lot of us, we may know, but our mind have drifted away from it. So when hmm. somebody hear this session and hear pregnancy, they, you know, they, some people might interpret it differently from how the others will. And, you know, when you said something like, you know, this 2023 and you went into full mode, it's amazing how God works. We're seeing abound, the grace of God abounds much more. So have you found yourself mm. in a situation where you feel like I really don't have a direction, a focal point of where I'm going with this journey that, you know, I have found myself in? You know, a lot of us Christians have been yeah, there. That, yeah, yeah, that scripture is in Romans 5, 20 to 21. Okay. And what did it say? Romans 5, Romans 5, 20 to 21. Yes. Moreover, the law entered that offense may abound, but where sin abound, grace did much more abound. Amen. That as sin had reigned unto death, even so my grace reigned through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You know, God does not want you to give up. Even though you feel like you've not really found your purpose of where you need to be heading that will bring glory to God, it starts from a place of prayer. And the prayer that you pray to God, it brings more opportunity for God to answer you. And there's nobody that does not pray to God that God does not answer. A lot of times, 
when we have unbelief, it looks like God is not listening to us. I've been there a lot of times where I am seeking to God for something and I'll be like, I'm praying, I'm fasting, I'm doing everything possible, I'm going the extra mile. I mean, like, God, have you forgotten me? What is going on? But there's something in my life that I need to abandon and, and choose God before God can really make me see that he's answering my prayers. You know, we are in the age of social media distraction. There's, I mean, almost everybody that has connection to social media. We, let's not lie to ourselves. We wake up in the morning, the first thing that comes to your mind is that you want to go to your WhatsApp, you want to go to mm-hmm. your Instagram or your yeah, Facebook. Facebook. Let's be honest <laughs> with ourselves. That's what's happening. That's where we find ourselves. And, and the more we keep succumbing to all of those fleshy desires, the more we keep drifting away, the more we keep going out of purpose. We might not know it, but over the time, it accumulates to something that we find ourselves in a place where we least expected. So yeah. being pregnant for God, like Sister Bumi just you know, narrated a while ago, is coming to a place where you say, Lord, use me as I am. Mm, use me as i am i i don't have all it takes to live for you i in fact i'm i'm among the worst of all sinners but Mm. here i am i realize that the journey so far that i've gone so far the mistakes the disobedience the lack of understanding has brought a lot of pain to me lord i surrender it all to you amen it's so it's more of being surrendering so when you surrender yourself to something you're telling that something that i want to obey you and i want you to be in charge they cannot be two mass captains in a ship it's not possible so god is a captain you cannot try to be a captain like god you have to give him his place to take charge and take total control of your life so that I hope this message that we've passed on to you has encouraged you, you know, in one way or the other, because it has encouraged me. So, sis, one other question is, what about for those people, unbelievers, that, you know, they're listening to this message now, they'd be like, wow, so there's something about finding your purpose in God. You know, what, what, what would you like to share with them concerning that insight? You know? Yeah. That's, yeah, so um, when you were talking and asking me that, those people just telling me, can you remember the story of Saul that became poor? Hmm. He wasn't even ready for transformation in his life at the time when God arrested him. Hmm. He wasn't even willing, like he was the persecutor yes. of the Christians back then. Hmm. He wasn't even willing, but God had a purpose for him, even in that state that he was. You're hmm. talking about when even if you are an unbeliever everybody has a purpose everybody has a purpose but sometimes some circumstances around our life will make us feel as if i'm too bad for god to use me or i'm too and that's one thing i always encourage please don't ever think you are too bad for Mm. god to use you don't ever think that you are too think about the prodigal son please if you don't know the story, maybe you don't read your Bible and you're not a Christian. The prodigal son was a child that left his father with all the wealth that he had. He left him because out of rebellion. He was rebellious and he left and he squandered all the money and everything. And when he, when he finally came back to his senses, he wanted to go back to his father to beg to be his father's slave or servant rather than even being his father's son because he knew he had really messed up bad, bad. Yeah. But when he went back to his father, his father was even ha- more, he was happier to see him. That even, that meanwhile, he had a brother that, was, that had been with the father all along and been serving his father. But mm. the treatment that the father gave this prodigal son was much more oh. than he had even ever given the child that stood with him. That even made the other child, was, well, he was jealous and say, I've been with you all this while. You never killed a cow for me. You never did this much for me. How come you are doing it for my brother? But that is how God treats one soul. That comes to him. Yeah, one no. soul. That, they, yes. that is rejoicing in heaven over one soul that comes to Christ. So mm-hmm. your situation, no matter. I just recently I just um, heard a story about a man. He was a warlock. He was he was a devilish, he was a man that was in charge of all the witches in the whole of Africa. 
according to wow. the story. <laughs> but God used that man. He hmm. came to himself. He, he said, I'm, okay, let's, let's come to modern day time now. We're talking about Paul and Saul, Bible days, right? This yes. is happened in modern day time. This man was the head of witches and wizards. He was. He had been dedicated. He he had been dedicated to the devil as a baby. I don't remember the man's name now, but he is now an evangelist to God. He's now an intercessor. You know that seriousness that the man had. He was so serious, and he took the assignment of the devil with so much so passion. Yeah. All that. All that passion in him. That hmm. if you can do this for the devil, you can do much more for me. Much more that for me. One. That's it. <laughs> that was when he drugged him. Yes. He took, mm. he took that. Because say, every soul belongs to God, whether the devil mm. likes it or not. Yes. Every every human being in this world belongs to God. to God. Whether the devil wants to use somebody, when God is ready for you, he will take his thing back. He mm. will take his thing back. God took his child back from the devil. Mm. He took his child back from the devil and he became, he's now a worker for God. He's now doing wow. things. He's now revealing the secrets of the devil to the people of God. So that is what wow. God can do to anybody. So sometimes like, you might not even be willing. The man talked about when he became transformed, when God brought him to his side. He was not even ready. He was full of anger. He said, the, the lady that God used to transform him, God gave that girl an assignment. And again, that girl's story is also very peculiar. Wow. Her story is very peculiar because she, she wasn't a pastor. She wasn't, a, she, wasn't, she wasn't a normal church goer that loved God. Wow. And God wanted to place this huge assignment on her lap. God wanted to place this huge assignment of converting the chief warlock of the town. And she was also trying to run away from that assignment because she was scared. I mean, I'm not a pastor, I'm not anything. I just, I just love things of God. God, why do you want to use me? Use someone else. And they said she, the girl was only 19 years old. At 19. That time. Wow. But God wanted to use, yes. God wanted to, I'll send you the story. God wanted to use that girl to transform the chief warlock of Africa. And she was, you know, that assignment in itself is huge. Mm. But just a girl that is not even an ordained pastor or anything. But wow. she took that assignment. No, she was not about to avoid it. But God, God, the way God orchestrated everything, she couldn't avoid that assignment because she met the man with she was hoping not to meet the man when she went, but she now met the man there. And when she now saw that, ah, it's like God is serious with this assignment. So she just took charge and had the confidence of God and called the man's name. When she called the man, she was calling the man's name. She was calling his name. Um, she was calling one of the names he didn't like to be called, James, huh. which was one of his names that was given to him when he was young. And the girl kept on calling him James. And she didn't like to be called James. Because he's the, it's a, it's a son, it's a, it, at that time, he was the son of the devil. He wanted to be called another crazy, like, master or something. Master. A very bad name. <laughs> exactly. That's what he liked. He said people wow. calling him master. And he was yeah. like, who is this small girl calling me yeah. James? Because the he's the boldness of God. Yes, yeah, oh. the audacity. Oh. Calling me James. And when he turned back and he wanted to attack the girl out of anger, the whole, when he looked into the girl's eyes, he said there were wow. fireballs to fire of the light of God wow. was in her eye and he couldn't attack her. He Ooh. couldn't attack her. He was so crazy. I said, when he described this thing, it was, oh man, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. That, that is the beauty of knowing who you identify that. I am born into this world, not just to come and occupy, just uh, not to come and um, be a bench um, warmer. warmer. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I, there's a purpose that God has. I don't know the other thing about that girl. The man said she died after, um, I think when she was 22 or so. Wow. She died? She, she died yeah, after three years. And he said, the reason why she died wow. was because God, because God himself revealed to the man, he said, she had fulfilled the purpose of which I sent her on earth. Hmm. She had fulfilled that purpose. So God, once she had fulfilled that purpose and God took her. So her purpose was to come and transform the chief yeah. warlock. Of Africa, hey. it came to people that hey. it's so deep, but deep. like nobody God cannot use them. So we are all you. created for a purpose. Mm -hmm. We are all pregnant with a child for the Holy Spirit. Yes, exactly. we are in the hand time. It's very hard to believe. Even me, it was hard to believe. But you know, the Bible said, when the end time comes, there will be a lot of distress. Mm -hmm. You gain 
of war from here. Brothers will be killing brothers. Sister will be killing sisters. I mean, diverse evil will be happening in diverse places. So now mm. the question is, what are you eager to achieve at this time where we are going through? Is This looks like more like the, the start of the tribulation that is that has been set. Sure. I tell myself, mm -hmm. I'm so eager to want to be with God. I don't know where, how mm. I came to that place. But I think that's the best feeling to ever have as a child of God. Because yeah. you say where your treasure mm. is, that is where your heart will be. So, oh, my dear brothers and sisters, mm. you are not, there's nothing too bad about you. There's nothing mm -hmm. worse about you that God cannot fix. fix right. I that I'm talking to you, I've been through a journey where I've disappointed a lot of people. I've I've had like nasty attitude. I mean, <laughs> I'm just gonna be very honest. I've had nasty mm -hmm. attitude towards a lot of people, and some people that cannot withstand it, they'll be like, man, they will just cut off. But mm -hmm. when it comes to a time when you are willing to surrender and you're not trying to figure it out yourself, God True. will connect you to the right people, right. the right mm -hmm. source that will hold you accountable and help you to walk in the direction that he has planned for you. Now is not mm -hmm. the time to waste. They say, redeem the time while you have that opportunity. And for the unbelievers, it is an opportunity. I know this message may sound like, wow, it's a lot. It may be mind-blowing to you. It may be not too clear to you, but I just want you to know that for the first time that you've come to listen to a message concerning this God that you're yet to know more about, you ask yourself, how do I get into this into this journey, so that I because knowing God brings peace. Honestly, doesn't mean you will not That's face right. trouble. Doesn't mean you will not face trials mm -hmm. because even the world we have is the devil's world. It is filled with evil yes. and all sort of atrocities. Mm -hmm. But if you want a sure mm -hmm. salvation, where even though you go through mm -hmm. trials and tribulation, you will not even feel that you are going through stuff because why the angels of god are always there to guide you and to make your feet not mm -hmm. to stumble so you want to give your life mm -hmm. to christ this is an opportunity amen amen yeah. please if you have yes and um at this time i want us to um pray and um for the salvation prayer mm -hmm. so just say heavenly father heavenly father i repent i, I repent, repent of my own ways and I accept you into my life. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior of my life. And I am ready to live my life as Christ lived his life. I ask that you forgive me of every sin and cleanse me of every unrighteousness. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Please. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you. you. Blessed me with your ministry, uh, Sister Bumi's ministry. Uh, she get it started on YouTube, and that's yeah. that's the um, the link. Please follow her and subscribe to our channel. You know, you. Um, and as much as you have that, as you are led, you can sow into our ministry. Um, so mm -hmm. you know, coming to YouTube is to honor God because, like yeah. I said, we are in the hand times, and mm -hmm. uh, we have very short time here and um, so we want to let you know that we don't know when we're going to leave we don't know when we're going to leave this earth so every opportunity you have to draw closer to God please do not hesitate do not stop and I pray that as you continue with your daily life may the spirit of God continue to go with you and bless you all the way Sis Bumi, thank you so much for gracing this platform yeah. and thank you don't forget to subscribe to this channel Sister Boone's yes. channel is Grace on yes. Perfection. Perfection. Every yes. morning prayer, seven minutes will not take out of your time in the day. Yes. Let's go. Amen. Let's go. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> right, thank you so much. Do we end the do we end the session with a prayer right now? So I will just stop the recording. Okay. Okay. Father Lord, I just want to say thank you so much for using your daughter to be a blessing today. Thank you for using me. 
um, you, you called us as a vessel unto honor. And thank you for the audience mm -hmm. that have watched this video. And I pray that you know you, you use your word to fill our hearts in any way there is any void in our mind, that you will heal us whatever situation we're going through, and that you will show forth your miracle in our life in a mighty way that when those who see us, they will say, indeed, this is a God that is worthy to serve, to be served, that it will attract mm -hmm. them unto you. It will bring more glory to you. There's many that will have the opportunity to listen to this message. I pray that this message will bless their life in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for mm -hmm. your daughter. Thank you for using her. I pray that her ministry will continue to grow, that you use her to reach out to nations not just community, but you use that to reach out to nations in a mighty way mm -hmm. that you show forth yourself in her life and in her family. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father. Thank you. So in Jesus' name, I pray. I speak for the abundance into every area of our life in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Hey. Thank you.